All right, hello everyone. My name is Corey Dowd, via the Veda. I'm back, and I wanted to do Eclipse, another Eclipse video. So this will be Eclipse Predictions Part Six, my 2020 thoughts for the the. Um, well, actually, this is really going to be about what's going on in the winter of 2021 as well. And okay, so the last thing I left it off on was Trump could actually this could still get overturned for Trump somehow or and um, that this would possibly cause a major civil war and um, a lot of unrest in society. Now, the other alternative is that Biden wins and goes forward. The thing is that if that happens, it looks like there will he's going to increase the lockdowns, and um, this is going to cause a major amount of civil unrest. And so either way, we are looking at a lot of civil unrest coming up this winter time. In February, almost every planet will be moving through Aquarius. Aquarius is a sign of the water bear, and it's a sign of making life more bearable on planet Earth. That's what it symbolizes, the bearing of the water, and something that all life needs. And, you know, the Aquarius is the maker of tanks and ponds and aqueducts and things that... The Aquarius is also humanitarian because he essentially is trying to make life more bearable for everyone. So there's going to be a lot more people feeling really activated and really wanting to engage in this more humanitarian work in making life more bearable. There's going to be a, this, this does translate directly to social work, activism, all these things. Um, Mars, we talked about earlier in the videos, Mars went retrograde all summer and there were all those fires and Joshua Tree and all this stuff and now he's gone, he's stationed and now he's going back direct. Mars is Trump's soul planet, his Atma Karaka. So Trump's not going to give up right now, okay? Like Trump is not, he's just, he's at a very, very strong point right now. And he is not likely to secede or concede or whatever you call it when you give up. So with that being said, um, now, I don't want to scare you guys, but this whole idea that I talked about with civil war and a cold war going on between the U.S. and China right now, this uh, it looks like the military has already taken a lot of precautions to account for this because if you basically look at how the fleets are arranged right now, the U.S. naval fleets, and I'll pull up an image of that right now so you guys can see this, Basically, all the fleets are arranged to protect the United States and its major metropolis, metropolises and major cities and everything. And then they're over there near China, kind of surrounding China and India. And then there is nothing else going on with our naval fleet at this moment. So, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And we I don't think that our fleet would be arranged in that sort of way if the major threat right now wasn't China. So... It's very possible that if if Trump does win or doesn't concede or there does end up being corruption that comes out that shows that Trump was the correct winner, it's very possible that since the media is not going to like that and they're in bed with Biden and China, they're going to spin this all into Trump is a dictator and Trump is refusing to concede. Trump's refusing to give up or, you know... Um, abdicate the throne and so they need to get the UN so the Democratic Party and all this and the media will try to make it seem like the UN needs to get involved and get China to actually take out Trump or destabilize or maybe even invade the US or something and this is the most crazy concept hopefully and I don't think this is all going to come true but this is just to show you guys the street level what's going on on the inside level what people are talking about what's not being said in the mainstream news and to kind of reinforce this idea of the cold war that's kind of going on right now now you're probably wondering well what are the astrological things behind the cold war well last january when all this started we had saturn and pluto conjunct and this is a long-term thing the outer planets this takes a long time is not a common thing Saturn and Pluto conjunctions if you consult the book Cosmos and Psyche Richard written by a Harvard graduate Richard Tarnas he goes into explaining how this particular placement this cycle whenever Saturn and Pluto are in an opposition a square or a conjunction these hard aspects there's about a 
a little bit of a window, but there's a year that's very strong. We have an atmosphere of really intense historical gravity at these times. We have things like Cold Wars happen. In fact, the Cold War started during a Saturn and Pluto hard aspect in 1946 to 1948. Uh, also, the, um, the, bu the bubonic plague started during a Saturn-Pluto um, conjunction. Rome was sacked by the Visigoths during a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, going really far back. You know how I talked about how the the um, the suppression of information happens a lot during, uh, or how it's happening right now with the eclipses? That also relates to Saturn and Pluto. In fact, the first time the Catholic Church ever actually created their list of banned books was during a Saturn and Pluto hard aspect. And when they, they, they burned a famous astrologer at the stake actually during one of these times. Um, I can pull that info up for you once. Yeah, in fact, um, George Orwell wrote the book 1984 in a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, and the year 1984 also had Saturn and Pluto lined up. So it's almost like it was in the collective psyche for him to pick that year. Um, and of course, 1981-84 was when the big Reagan era of the Cold War and communism was happening. And this was literally the time that Reagan called Russia an evil empire. You know, all this intense uh, contraction happens during a Saturn-Pluto cycle. Um, Saturn is the planet that rules winter time and contraction. You know, he rules Capricorn Aquarius. He rules, he's the final sign. He represents limits. Pluto empowers everything that it's with. So this is the time when the you've noticed how the conservative side is more empowered now. Five years ago, six years ago, whatever, that there was a time that the Uranus-Pluto energy was going. And that's more of the hippie era energy. That was the era that, that makes everything, you know, social justice moves forward, equal rights, liberty for all, the arts flourish. You know, um, this is what happens during a Uranus-Pluto time. Now we're in a Saturn-Pluto time, and this is when more it's more likely to have things like war or rumors of war, Cold War, things like that. Um, in fact, the first time Protestants were burned at the stake was during a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And it was the book Index Liborum Prohibitorum. Um, yeah, Pope Paul III in Rome instituted that during a Saturn-Pluto alignment in 1543. You can learn all about this in the book Cosmos and Psyche, um, the chapter Conservative Empowerment. So I will direct you guys to go to that to look more into this. But yeah, this is a big reason why, um, you know, we've had Brexit, we've had more of a conservative movement in the United States going on. This is part of the astrological cycles. So, Basically, what I'm trying to get at is from the outer planets angle, it looks like Trump and is very empowered right now. Um, and there's actually a lot of rumor that even if Trump doesn't win this or, <clears throat> or whatever, if he's not president, <clears throat> he, there's a big talk of him wanting to start Trump TV, where he will basically be a, uh, you know, he will start his own media. And we astrologers can see that he has Rahu in Gemini. So that really makes a lot of sense for him, and that probably would be an extremely profitable endeavor for him. <clears throat> so that's also a really interesting idea. But in general, uh, yeah, the outer planets are empowering Trump, and he's also, Trump was born on an eclipse, and we're about to have an eclipse, and the eclipses always basically activate Trump in a really major way. In fact, there's no way that he would have been even elected if it weren't for the great American eclipse when um, the solar eclipse in Leo happened and Trump got elected, who has a Leo ascendant. Um, <clears throat> so Trump's getting activated by the eclipses. He also just began an Antar Dasha of his K2, if you look at his chart. A K2 Antar Dasha just started right after the election. Now what's funny is his K2 is in Sag, and it's a malefic there. If you watch my video, Sag has to do with falls from heights. So that really indicated this fall. You know what I mean? That was happening. And it's really funny because I will just say from an omen angle, two weeks before the election, I was thinking about him and I thought, and I, and this lizard fell in my porch and that, and then the omen of the lightning striking Trump tower were the only things that really made me think, gosh, he actually might not win this election. Um, even though, you know, outside the mainstream media, he 
pretty much everyone agreed that he was going to win. And using astrology, it looked like that too. Um, so basically, this eclipse coming up, it is really strongly activating Trump. He's not going to give up, I don't think, very easily. And so that means that we could really have a major conflict going on because it doesn't look like China or, you know, the other side wants to give up very easily either. So we're scheduled to have a lot of conflict for January and February and a lot of civil unrest. Um, there could be multiple shootings in, there could be riots, there could be actual um, small outbursts of violence, hopefully nothing really serious though. The rest of the world is going to see a lot more lockdowns going on um, when the plants move through Aquarius. And Mars moving through Taurus isn't necessarily going to calm it down because Mars is going to go through, going to be uh, crossing over Uranus, who is in Taurus. That is going to basically empower Mars. So there's going to be a lot more of a martial energy going on. And that, you know, that, so basically other astrologers were saying when Mars moves through Taurus, people will kind of cool down and just be like, okay, we'll wear masks now and we'll be fine. And I don't, I don't see that happening personally. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, so yeah, basically this winter is just a really good winter to have a few weeks worth of extra canned beans and rice and food and water. And, um, I, you know, I said that for people last year. I didn't say it on YouTube. But I said to all my personal and intimate friends, and they know that. <laughs> and so I don't get the credit for saying that last year officially, but I'm saying it this year. It's looking very much the same. So please, please get yourself some stored up water, beans and rice, feminine hygiene products, whatever you need. Um, I can segue that. Another interesting thing is that Uranus in Taurus is also a big marker for the cryptocurrency explosion that's happening and the changes in the uh, currency and with the economy. And I talked about that in the last video. It's still a very, very interesting and good time to buy some Bitcoin if you're interested in that, because in a long term sense, it is looking like that's going to be more of the that's going to become much more standardized as Jupiter and Saturn move through Aquarius. Remember, Libra is changing air. So it has to do with the changing social currency. Aquarius is fixed air, so it's with fixing your currency, fixed trade, fixed social things. So that's why Bitcoin exploded when Saturn was in Libra, but it was changing. It was too unstable. Now it's going to be stabilizing in Aquarius, so it's a very good time to try to move into that market. Um, another thing that Aquarius rules is islands, standing in the deep. So Aquarius can have, there might just be more news events surrounding islands coming up this winter, and coming up in the future um, next couple years. And I also think that there could be a lot of news events surrounding an oil rig or like a disaster with an oil rig or something like that because we know that Jupiter represents oil and Saturn in Aquarius represents standing in the deep. So that's an oil rig, you know what I mean? Like an oil rig is something that's out in the middle of the ocean and is just drilling for oil. And, um, you know, accidents happen with those things, and, th and there's going to be a lot of weird avastas and conditions going on in the, in the stars this winter. So I would be really curious to see if anything new happens with an oil rig. And then that leads me to another point. Just in general, this next two and a half year window is going to be a great time for improving a lot of our energy solutions, like clean water, like getting cleaner water to different areas, like how Aquarius represents the water bearer or the person who is, you know, making life more bearable for others, which means providing clean an access for clean water or a more decentralized currency that is not as corrupt, that, you know, is more fair for everyone, you see, or more fair social media platforms that are for everyone. So this is why I've been making these predictions is that, um, when you want to make the mundane predictions, you have to look at the eclipses and Jupiter and Saturn and the outer planets and kind of the stage that they're setting. And then we can go into it more specifically and look at down to the week, <clears throat> weekly level. We look at the more minor transits of Mars and Mercury and Venus and the moon and so forth. Okay, so those are my thoughts on this. Um, I'm not saying we're going to have war. I'm just saying, you guys, this is, this is looking like a pretty intense winter. And we still have the Saturn-Pluto energy 
when which is a time which creates intense intensely difficult and contracting historical events so plan accordingly thanks you guys